Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're back. Yes, and uh, we are going to talk today about the electric car industry yeah. and we highlight a really important player and that can be uh, an interesting company to look at for 2024. Absolutely, definitely. Um, of course, we talked about it in the past, but this time, the first time, we're going to dive into it and at the end, you will know for yourself if you believe in this company or not. And um, before that, I want to say that the uh, the carbon, uh, the, the global emission of carbon, 16%, 16% is coming from the, ro- the, the things on the road. Mm. Uh, and as we know, uh, that, that is under pressure. So this is a sector that is, we always talk about, we almost always talk about sectors, and this is a grown sector. Absolutely. And there are a lot of debates about how fast and, and only in the cities and which countries, but it's a grown grown sector. So if you invest in an electric car producer, you are investing in a growing sector. It's not going to go back. No. And we are talking to, today, and I call it BYD. And I was calling it BIT. Yeah. <laughs> but we keep calling it how we want to call yeah, it. Yeah, huh? BID and BIT. BYD. Maybe you heard of it, maybe not, uh, because you don't see the cars in Europe, no. almost. <clears throat> no, no. Um, it's a Chinese manufactory. They exist. Martin will tell something about the history. It, it's from back to, uh, to almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were in the news this week because they sold more electric cars in last quarter than Tesla did. 526 versus a 485,000 cars of Tesla. Um, over the whole year, Tesla sold 1.8 and BYD 1.6, but together with the hybrid models that they still offer, they sell almost the same amount of hybrids, 1.6 million. They are um, much bigger than, than, than Tesla in that. Exactly. Um, Chinese company, as I said, and um, they have taken over the third position of um, Volkswagen. If you look at the really? value of, really? of, of, I didn't know that. Of, of, the, of the car producers, and Volkswagen is really bad in the news because they 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 also producing 40% of the electric cars are coming from China, so it's mm. the other way around. But they they uh, they have problems with the with the with the um, with the manufacturing, and um, they didn't innovate uh, well enough, not fast enough. For example, the ID7, the newest flagship, is not on the market in I think in Europe, but in China, it's not selling. Is it? No, it's not selling. And um, and Byte on the opposite opposite are doing great. Nine of the ten cars that they sell are coming from China. They have forty percent market share in China, and abo- uh, and among the ten top models sold, seven are coming from them. Mm-hmm. And um, do they only want to stay in China? No, they want to grow. They uh, they they opened this year a plant in Thailand with a capacity of one hundred fifty thousand cars. A new one in China for 600,000 cars. Um, plan is uh, plant is announced in Hungary and also one in Brazil. <coughs> so they are growing really. For, uh, uh, Martin will also talk about the technical uh, uh, from a te- technical analyzer perspective, and I will go further into yeah, the yeah, into yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, Let's first dive a little bit into the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah but and, and but I close off before <laughs> I give it to you. Is it all positive? No, definitely not. I think you have to uh, realize three headwinds that they're facing. Uh, one of them is the, 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 the ban that, for example, already France installed by uh, half of December last, uh, last month, that they, um, yeah, that they, uh, that the, the, the subsidy that they give on electric cars is not given to cars produced outside of Europe. Mm-hmm. The second thing is, and it's still a Chinese company, a lot of uh, things are going on between China and Europe, between China and the US problems in China itself uh, with uh, with mm. the economy. So exactly. you must keep that also into consideration. And the EU is investigating how the subsidy sub, um, subsidies work in China, because if they come to the conclusion that they say they get so many subsidies, so they can produce for so such low prices, yeah, then you don't have a one level playing field. So Correct. three things to keep in mind, a little bit of headwind. History. History, yes. Yeah. So, Bit was founded in the 90s. Initially, they were a, a battery or an, uh, yeah, a battery producer, mainly also for. Um, and, and it was funny yeah, because in 2000, they were the largest producer of, of batteries for mobile phones, on, amongst others, for instance, Motorola were using their, their batteries. Um, 
Bit Auto branch of, or, or part of the company was founded only in 2003. So it's only 20 years old. And um, the first car that entered into production after, of course, design and, and research and development, etc., was the Bit F3. And you have a picture of the car in front of you here. I leave it up to you if you like it or not. But ended, I don't like it. The car entered into production in 2005. Then they started building a hybrid model, a hybrid car, first plug-in hybrid car. And it was already in 2008, so 15 years ago, they already had a hybrid car. So you could say, think, say what you want, but it, they were pretty pioneers. advanced and pioneers in that fact. I think Toyota came later, of course, and, and many other branches, but they were already in 2008. And then the first fully electrical car was the Bit E6, the BYD E6. And that was in 2009. And also here you have a picture of this car. It looks a bit like uh, the Fiat. Chrysler. Yeah, but also a little bit like this Fiat with the three-seater, you know, in the front. The Multiplan. The Multiplan, the most ugly car ever produced, what they call that. Um, and and um, they ended the production of fully uh, uh, internal combustion engine cars in uh, March 2002 to focus fully on new energy cars. So they were still producing, uh, uh, and they are still producing hybrid uh, uh, cars, but fully uh, combustion engine uh, cars they no longer uh, produce and they also um, if you look at the brands uh, you have bit and that's also what you said uh, before eh, because they produce uh, seven of the ten cars in china are from from them but they also have other brands so denza is a brand of them and uh, yang wang and fang cheng bao is also mm -hmm. uh, a brand so they they produce much more other uh, brands uh, of, of cars as well and the interesting uh, thing about bit is that they um they operate in various amount of sectors. So everything that you have in this car, except the windows and the tires, is in-house built. And that, can, that they say they can, by them doing that, they can keep the costs very low and also keep um, um, yeah, a lot of control on uh, the, the, the whole production of the, of, of the, of the plant and of the, of the models, etc. Um, if you look at um, uh, the, 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 the amount of cars eh, that they have produced, and they, they built already their sixth million car. And that's since we, of course, if you look at it, it's tremendous. Eh? It's, it's not like a new player here. They passed Tesla with cars produced. Well, that's important what you say, because uh, we think, oh, it's a new player and one newbie, because you have a lot of Chinese yeah, yeah, yeah. EV manufacturers that the first thing they ever did is starting three years ago with developing an e in an electronic car. But this is not a new yeah, player. No, it's not a new player. And of course, they started, and, and Elon Musk, when they started in 2011 with the electrical cars, he laughed about it. Ah, have you, but have you seen those cars? But if you look at those cars now, you showed to me just now when you went down to the studio, you showed me a car. It's beautiful. It's absolutely a beautiful car. I would buy it. And also, you can see there's a lot of development on the whole. A brand is very important, and, and you can see they are paying attention. I've heard the the, the 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 progress of how they changed their logo, and it came from yeah, a really I'm going to say this. I think I give my opinion here, an ugly logo to nowadays yeah, quite a sexy logo with with the the B which is open and it has in the middle has uh, the the plug which is then of course because of fully electric. They have thought about this and. I like it. I like I like how they how they uh, did this. Casper explained they're also in Europe, pretty active. Eh? They have uh, started uh, delivering cars in in uh, 2022 in Europe, with uh, mainly in Scandinavian countries, in Denmark, uh, in Sweden, also in the Netherlands, in Germany, and they're building a huge factory on just across the border with Austria and and Hungary in Szeged uh, for a production of 100,000 vehicles uh, per year. So yeah, they're, they're doing a lot. And, and next to the fact that they they um, they build cars, they have an in a research institute for electrical buses. They have a product planning uh, uh, plan. So they, they they really think about improving the production process. Um, they think about the the, the, the environment. It is an ecology institute. So there's a lot of very positive initiatives in in bid going on. And yeah, you can see also, and, I will, and Gasper will dive into it from an investment perspective at the figures. I will come back. To, after Casper finished with, with the technical uh, technical point of view, but it's it's um, it's 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 a, it's when you talk about it, it's a nice company. It's a it's a good it's a big nice beautiful company. And I think um, it's this of course what is then a big nice beautiful company. Please tell us a little bit about the figures about the growth. And, uh, I think if you go and search <coughs> on the internet after you watch the vlog and then you see the seal uh, the, the the car. Yeah, it's a nice one. And the seal U is coming up. It's a surf. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct, yeah, but the the discussion um, in Europe is um, that a lot of the electric cars that are 
produce now are for the high sector. Mm. But for the lower sector, there are not a lot of electric cars yet. And they have already one of the market in China, and it's called the Seacool. And it's a small car, you can, mm. can compare a little bit like the, um, the Smart, you know, the, the, it's a four doors. Mm -hmm. I saw a review and quite big inside. Mm. And that's probably will come in the ma on the market also in Europe for around 10,000 euros. Yeah, that's the, it's a 10, 12,000 yeah, dollars. Then car becomes really accessible. Yeah. And that can be, you know, you know that that place, that area, the the yeah, the, the the lower models, that is, they they can do mm -hmm. so so much in there. Absolutely. Tesla is also promising to bring a, mo a model on the market in that sector, but still, is uh, that's not concrete. So no, no, they no. have already the model. And uh, what you said, the batteries, they um, they produce also batteries that they sell to Tesla, mm -hmm. and they are the the number three player in the market, twelve percent market share of the battery factor. Um, they're doing great. They had higher cross margins and they're closing the cap to net income and revenues. And probably you also know that, that Warren Buffett is an investor for a long time, for years in this company. And that's also mm -hmm. quite remarkable because he is normally only focusing, no, not focusing, but he invests a lot in US companies. Correct. But he said, for example, Tesla, I'm not going to invest in because high capital of costs, the per price earnings is still not, not not good enough, and the um, the they, they need to show over a long term five years that they are a financial stable company. But by B Y D, mm. he already invested in. I think it was ten years <laughs> in. 2023, so last year he decreased his share. They had 10%. It's now around 5%. I don't know why they did it. Maybe because the, the share price went up and they sell, sold something. Mm -hmm. But so they are uh, for a long time investor already in that company. Correct. And then I already mentioned some figures. I will close off with some other fundamental figures. 76% of their revenues is coming from the car part. So it's not. I made the comparison before, not like Amazon, they have uh, all the profit they make uh, uh, on, on, on the cloud, but they make the profit and the revenues they make uh, mainly on the autom automobile and related product mm -hmm. um, business units. If you look at um, the profit per share, 2023, it was 12 Hong Kong dollar. You, with us, you can buy the share on the market in Hong Kong. It's trading around 208 Hong Kong dollars. So with a profit per share of 12, you have a price earnings of around 17. Correct. It is expected that, uh, because they're doing so well, that the profit per share will go up from 12 to 15, and then you are, then you buy the company of around 13 times the profit. And that's not, that's not that high as Tesla. No, that, no, no, that, definitely that, not. I don't no, say no. anything, that's just, just facts. And also a remarkable thing I want to highlight is the last part is that their uh, assets went up from 575 billion Hong Kong dollar in 2021, no, no, 22 to 700 billion in 2023. And then on the other side, that debt, that they, uh, they brought it back from 31 billion to 17 billion. Wow. Yeah, that's tremendous. Huh? Yeah. And if you look at it from a technical perspective, so technical means looking at the chart. I put uh, Bid and Tesla together, and, and what I notice directly is that Tesla has a lot more uh, volatility, a lot more movement in the in the, in the valuation of the price. Uh, Bid is much more flat, and I think that's maybe also why Warren Buffett likes it. It's not as exciting. With Tesla, you go from 250 to 400, from 400 back to 100, and from 100 back to 250. There's a lot of movement there, while Bid is moving yeah, quite steadily between 25 and and, and 30 in this case, and I have the uh, listing on the NASDAQ. You can also buy it on Hong Kong dollars, eh? so, but this is the listing on the NASDAQ. And if you look from a fundamental, uh, sorry, fundamental perspective, you did that from a technical perspective, and I used a very simple indicator, which you can see in the screen now, is that you have the red line, which is the 30-day moving average, that's basically to get the choppiness out of the line, and I have the 90-day moving average, which is just the green line. It's like, like you see a quarterly trend, basically, in uh, in the chart and you see both of the lines are going down and actually the, the price of the stock is also uh, trading below um, yeah below that uh, uh, average uh, lines and that is obviously normally not a good signal because it means that the price is going down but you see that the, the on that the price chart is already crossing 
the 30 day moving average. And if you look at the moving average diversion, so the change in the trend, there you see some positivity coming. You see that it came from negative to positive and it start to move up a little bit. So from a technical perspective, still not a buy, um, but something to, 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 to follow. You can set this up in your own platform as well. If you don't know how to do it, just let me know and I'll help you with it. It's pretty easy. And it gives you a good idea of, of, of where the stock might be. If you look for and then, then I round off with it, it's the RSI, so the relative strength index. You can also set this up in your chart deck. This will not give you a clear indication now because it's just in the middle. The RSI is between 70 overbought and 30 oversold, and it's exactly at the middle. So I hope you have um, uh, some, 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 something with this. You have some, um, yeah, so something to hold on to, to make decisions uh, uh, with the fundamental part of Casper and, and with the technical part that I just gave you to the evaluate of this is a stock that fits in your portfolio. I think the EV sector is growing. That's um, a fact. Within that sector, there are, like Volkswagen, there are really big problems. Tesla, I won't say they're big problems, but yeah, for now you can say that B, that we, BYD is, is growing so fast. And I think if we put those two charts in the screen, then you <coughs> see how fast it goes. And um, if you believe in, in that sector, then it's, this is a company that you can consider it for 2024. Definitely. With all the headwinds, but it can be an interesting stock to follow. Thank you for watching. Give us your time. See you next week. Thank you.